guys. So guys, there's nothing I enjoy more after eating a Chuckles Chippy than unboxing a bit of new tech that I've purchased. What have I purchased today? I've purchased two full bay USB 3 2.5 and 3.5 inch hard drive docks. Orico. It's a name you know. It's a name you trust. So without further ado, let's open it up. Uh, it looks like a sleeved box with a bit of tape around it, sealing it. So let's just cut through that tape right now. There we go. Nice and easy does it. And on the other side, there it is. Nice and easy. Uh, is there tape on the other side? No, there's not. Let's uh, open this bad boy up then. Very standard piece of packaging. Very standard indeed. Uh, okay, it's the outer sleeve. Thanks for choosing Orico. www.orico.com.cn Right, okay, so it looks like this opens up here. There we go. So what we've got. Right, well, on the top we have the dock itself. It is black. And then it's in some kind of plastic packaging. And then a box underneath it. Presumably country specific paraphernalia in here. Let's open this up. So, what do we have? We do indeed have a UK specific plug here, figure and eight connection, and a power supply here, uh, English and Chinese text on it, hopefully won't burn my house down. Uh, what else do we have? We have standard USB cable, we have a couple of bits of paper in here of some sort, we have a card with Chinese on one side and English on the other, a uh, registration card effectively, and a user manual. Who's going to even look at that? That's the contents of that box. The, uh, the dock itself. Let's uh, open this packaging up here. Get a tape on the end. Rip that off. Here we go. So, yes, we have four bays here with the two and a half inch fit and then it pushes down for the three and a half inch fit fairly standard uh, Orico leading technology on the one side it's like tilt on the bays there uh, what do we have on the back we have the USB plug we have a switch that switches between PC and clone now I did a bit of research on this before I purchased it if you have it in clone mode, it doesn't need to be attached to a computer at all, and uh, you place the drive that you want to copy in this slot, and then up to three drives that you want to copy to into these slots, and it will clone them. Uh, I'm not sure what those, that's a lot not useful to me. Uh, or PC mode, and they just appear as four USB attached SATA bad boys. And there's a start and reset button for running the clone mode stuff. And Yeah, and then the power input. So, that looks pretty good, probably exactly the same as is in the other box. So, um, without further ado, I suppose I should uh, get these rigged up to a machine. Well, here I have the two Orico units. It is my intention that they will be situated here, on top of the cabinet. So I should be threading some USB and power cables from the section beneath, around and up into the back of these gentlemen. So to begin, I ran in a two gang power extension plugged into the UPS under the unit. And I'll plug in my two UK power leads there. Then I will grab the two DC units here, which I will then plug in to here. Well, wow, that's quite an arc. Wow, that's some very nice arcing there. It's lovely. And uh, those cables will then run around here and will hang over basically for the uh, units to plug into. And then of course we need USB. So here we have our two USB cables. So those will plug into the back of this computer straight into those USB 3 blue coloured ports. Slip that in effectively. There we go. And those cables will also run around the back there to plug into the back of those units. Jolly good. 
Okay, let's plug them in. Okay, so firstly, a USB cable. These USB cables are, of course, absurdly short, as is so often the case. So it's only just about going to fit here. Just about going to reach. And the other one, just making sure these are both set to PC rather than to clone. Plug that in there. Okay, okay, there we go. All connected up. And then we'll turn the PC on. And now behold, if all is well, it'll hopefully boot up. And then we can plug some drives in. And uh, those drives will hopefully be seen by the operating system. Oh, how exciting. I arrived bearing gifts, a stack of old hard disk drives. Okay, well, let's not waste any time. Let's turn these on. Very exciting. Uh, Seagate Barracuda 7200 RPM, 1 terabyte. Going in to the first bay for the first unit. So, uh, Light HDD1 has come on on the unit. I can hear the drive spinning up. There's a bit of clickage. Flash, oh, red flashing on the HDD1 light there. Aha, here we have it. New USB SDB, one terabyte. There we go, yes, Linux has indeed seen the drive. Try another one. Exactly the same as the first one. Yes, HDD2 light has come on. Uh, spinning up, beautiful. And that's just reset by the looks of it. Both HDD lights went out and then both HDD lights came back on again. That's not necessarily the greatest thing to have ever happened. Yeah, there's, there's Linux isn't very happy there. It seems like the USB device disappeared completely. Hmm. Struggling. Well, that hasn't come back on at all. Anyway, let's uh, let's try something in the other units. This is another. This is a Seagate Barracuda, one terabyte. This is a green power one though, so uh, lower RPM. Let's just stick that in the second unit and see how that gets on. Well, red light come on. Nothing really happening. Let's just plug lots of them in and just see what happens, shall we? Oh, all the lights went out on that one again. Let's plug these all in. Everything we've got. There we go. Right, all eight drives plugged in. And the lights are kind of just going off on the second unit one by one. And there they, all the lights are off on both units now. Oh, there we go. The four lights have just come on on the first unit. Second unit, no lights on. No kernel messages coming out at all. It's not brilliant, is it? I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's turn both units off. There we go. Uh, a bunch of, bunch of messages there on the screen about things going away. Right, let's just fire them up from cold and see what happens. Here we go. Right, eight drives, all about to spin up at once. Ooh, wow, that is vibrating the table quite significantly. That's quite a thing. Well, there's definitely patterns of lights going on. Ah, SDB, SDC, SDD, SDE. Okay, so we've certainly got the first four drives there. And... That seems to be about it, really. The uh, first unit's struggling a little by the looks of it. One of the lights is on red. Yes. Well, this doesn't seem to be going all that well, but it might be that some of these drives are a bit dubious. So I'll go away and uh, play around with this and see what I can get going on. Mr. Panicover. I stepped away briefly to get myself a beverage, and by the time I returned, seven of the eight devices were seen. So I assume the eighth device was just a bit dicky and uh, giving it a little bit of trouble detecting all seven devices. I've removed the eighth device now, turned everything off and on again, and it detected them relatively quickly. So I think all is well. I then uh, DD'd out ten gigs from Dev Zero onto each of the devices just to make sure that all was well. So I think we're all right. Anyway, without further ado, let's just hop on now and uh, set up a bit of ZFS across those drives, shall we? Okay, so let's log in using my queue. And first thing I'm going to do 
is list the clock devices so you can see them. Uh, there we have it, our seven discs, each of size one terabyte, ready to use. So I'm going to create a command point to put this volume on, which I'm going to call var data, and then uh, Deadpool create forcibly at the mount point slash var slash data. Uh, I'm going to call the um, volume my data, and I'm going to make it a ray z2. Now, for those of you who are not overly familiar with ZFS, the RAID Z2 gives you two disks worth of parity. So I've got seven one terabyte disks. I'm using two disks worth of capacity for parity data, which gives me five terabytes of usable disk space. That means that I can afford two failed disks before there's any risk of me losing my data. ZFS does support Z1, Z2, and Z3 for one, two, or three disks worth of parity data. And as these disks are a bit old, I figure the chance of two drives failing simultaneously is a little higher, so I'll go with two disks worth of parity. Right, and then we decide what to incorporate. So Divided SDB, SDC, SDD, SDE, SDF, SDG, and SDH. So those are our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 disks that we're going to include in the RAID set. So let's create that. Oh, how very exciting this is. And it's now uh, creating that across those 7 disks. And there we go, no error messages, that's probably a good sign. So let's uh, do a Z pool status my data and uh, there we go we can see from the output that we have uh, our RAID Z2 with seven drives in it so that's very exciting um, and let's just have a look at uh, the uh, mounted volumes on ZFS there we go my data on slash var slash data type ZFS so if we go into slash var slash data and let's just create a file and have a look oh, I can't spell uh, there we go, and there is a file on my new RAID set called my file. Um, well, I guess that's about it really for this video. I've taken some drives, I've created a Z pool, and uh, another five terabytes to play with to my heart's content. Well, guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. And guys, as usual, please do feel free to comment below. But for now, guys, there's very little more left for me to do except to say. Thank you for watching, look forward to seeing you in the next one, and goodbye!